the way I could explain this is, in terms of efficiency, just imagine someone who's able to run really fast versus another person who's able to run really fast. But the person who's like more athletic can do a lot more in a short period versus the other person who's also athletic but not as efficient. You know, in order to do what that first person did in a short distance, he has to do like double or quadruple what that person did in order to be as efficient as that person. That's what I think is going on here. The GOAT is extremely efficient with what they do. They're extremely efficient with their delivery of machines. Like they're, it's crazy that they're able to do this. The truth about the Challenger is that in motion, almost didn't have a choice but to release that wheel if you think about it. Because what else would they have released? If there was something better that Inmotion could have released, they would have released it. How's it going guys? So I just came from this fabulous ride. I uh, left the house probably five minutes ago. I've been watching the baby all day. You know, my young boy. So, shout out to him. <laughs> But anyway, I, uh, I'm done. My lady, you know, has taken over now. So I decided to go for a night's journey like I usually do um, or usually have in the past before the baby. So I figure, you know, why don't I employ that again? Why don't I go back to what I used to do, which was, you know, when I felt a certain way or felt lazy or tired or uninspired, I just go for a crazy long ride at night. You know what I mean? So, but the reason I'm doing this ride is because um, I have I have had a few thoughts about the InMotion lately and the InMotion 13 to be exact. And you know, I was just thinking, hmm, interesting. So it's 100 and whatever pounds, 110 pounds or so. And uh, I just thought I should make a video regarding the truth about the InMotion V13. And again, this is all my conjecture, you know, I have a big mind, um, I have an, uh, an opinionated mind, so I'm going to give you my opinion here on why I think the InMotion V13 Challenger is really not what you think it is. <laughs> it's really not what you think it is. Um, it's kind of sad actually. But here's the reality. I'll get right into it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna preface it too much. I'm just gonna get right into it. So what you're looking at here is what you guys know what this is. This is the beautiful EXN. You know what I mean? This is the highly capable um, and very specifically designed EXN, right? That came from the less liked and less loved, less accepted uh, EX, right? So here's the thing, this wheel is highly capable on-road and maybe a little bit off-roading like I'm doing right now. Um, this is truly not really off-roading, but you know, it'll do for a speed wheel. It's like the equivalent of taking a Ferrari, uh, you know, on some dirt track. This is not really meant for off-roading. The reason it's not meant for off-roading is because of the extremely low pedals. The pedals on the EXN is extremely low. But let me get to the point. The point of the video is the InMotion V13 Challenger is not what you think it is, okay? So the EXN, which is what you're looking at right now, is a fabulous machine. It's actually more fabulous than you think. It's actually a lot more capable, a lot more ahead of its time, both in terms of design and capabilities, portability, dimensions, than you think. And the V13 Challenger proves it. it. It literally proves my point. The V13 Challenger is a tall wheel, number one. Okay? Is this a tall wheel? Is this EXN a tall wheel? No. It's actually about the similar dimensions to the uh, MSVs. All MSVs. Just a little bit taller and a tiny bit thicker, but nothing too thick that causes your pads to pretty much, you know, get you bow-legged like this, you know? <laughs> it's actually great. Um, I can jump it, you know, here we go. Jump it right there. I can maneuver it, you know? It's beautiful, woo, 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 woo. I mean, it's, it's playful. I can stop, 
you know, on a dime. Yes, I don't like this right here. It's a very weak motor because it's a speed, but look, it's a very, very weak motor. Um, even in hard mode, it's very weak, but that's okay. I have that in mind. I'm aware of that. So I'm not too worried about its performance. I ride accordingly. Another thing is, is it heavy? Would you say the EXN is a heavy wheel? No, I wouldn't say the EXN is such a heavy wheel that you need to worry too much about it. So for example, if you look at the Challenger, it's 110 pounds. This EXN is not as heavy. Okay, definitely not as heavy. I'm not gonna look it up right now. You guys can look it up. The main distinguishing factor is that this wheel does not have suspension. It doesn't have guardrails. The V13 Challenger has a lot more stuff in it, which causes it to be very heavy. But as we saw with the T4, you know, you don't need to have a heavy wheel to have a great wheel. You know what I mean? Just because someone wants range does not mean you have to give them a ton of batteries and then just kill it on the weight. So here's the thing. Here's the basics. This wheel is so perfect, right? So perfect for non-off-roading activities. It's so perfect, right? It's 2,700 watt hours. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying? It's 2,700 watt hours. How many watt hours is the V13? It's 3,024 watt hours. That is the V13, the Challenger. But then you'll say, hey, you stride. What are you talking about? You can't compare the two. That's 300 watt hours more. That's more battery packs. You know what I mean? It's, of course, it's gonna be heavier. Plus it has suspension. Plus it has those rails. Okay, fine. I could right now, which I'm going to do, contact, I forgot who it is, but I'm gonna contact them and I'm gonna ask them for the 500 watt hour battery pack that they sell for the EXN to upgrade the EXN's capabilities or wattage, watt hour, range, whatever, to, uh, you know, 3200 watt hours, making this wheel even more perfect, even solidifying its role as the most convenient wheel ever built by Gotway. Um, for those who are concerned that wheels are going in the wrong direction with weight, okay? Meanwhile, you have a wheel that is maybe 30% more heavier than the EXN, maybe more 25% like taller in terms of like mass, you know what I mean? Um, you can't carry it with one hand, okay? You have to use those two freaking rail. Look, first of all, let me preface this by saying, I love what InMotion did with their wheel. I am so glad this thing exists, okay? I'm not ca you know, casting any shade on the, the production of this wheel. It's freaking amazing. In fact, I would love to have it, okay? I would love to have it. So here's the thing. With 500 watt hours more, I could make this wheel in an instant better than the uh, InMotion V13. Now, the major distinguishing factor here is, besides the suspension and the rails, is the speed. The V13 Challenger has a speed of about um, 55 miles an hour, 55 plus miles an hour, with an amazing buffer at 88 miles per hour in terms of uh, lift speed, right? So that, that means, hey, you have a great lift speed and you have a great buffer, so it's safe. But what have we seen recently with the V13, with the, was it the V11? No, the V12, a lot of cutouts, right? So what does that tell you? That tells you that the Challenger, unless, unless I, look, I, I, don't have a cha I don't have a V12 and I don't have a lot of uh, information from owners of the V12, but unless they fix that problem, that problem is probably going to propagate over to the Challenger. Because unlike Kingsung, okay, where they attempted to answer the issue with, um, uh, you know, the, the fire by creating a video demonstrating what they've specifically done to try to alleviate that problem. Um, I haven't seen something similar with InMotion. They have told people to, you know, rough, you know, do that test that they, came up with or whatever, uh, the lifts test and you know, jerk it front, jerk it back, and if it cuts out, then you have a bad wheel or whatever, a bad board. 
I met a guy the other day, he had a V12, it's, it looks beautiful. The V12 is like, it's a, it's a beautiful wheel. Um, it's the right size. It's portable. It's like 1750 or so uh, watt hours. It just seems that. Uh, yeah, okay, so let me not finish. Let me finish my first thought. It seems like the issues of the V12, if not addressed properly with the V12, might transfer over to the Challenger. Now I know that In Motion um, has, in fact, um, issued new boards to certain people through the distributors. For example, E Wheels, and they've given people new boards, and they've said, "Hey, go ahead, install this board. It should fix the issue." And since then, I haven't heard any issues with. Um, uh, to be fair, I haven't heard any issues with cutouts on the V12. I don't know, guys. Let me know if you've heard anything regarding cutouts with the new board on the V12. But I haven't heard anything. Um, and the guy I met the other day with the V12, he changed the board over, uh, you know, recommended, you know, following the recommendations of E Wheels and In Motion. But he himself has never had any cutout issues. But he changed it anyway just to be safe. So there's that. But number two, what I'm realizing is Gawe is, or Bigode, is definitely showing its hand. It's showing that it's so superior, dude. Like, I don't think you guys understand how superior Gawe really is. Take a look at this wheel once again, okay? Just look how manageable and small it is. Just take a look at it, okay? Just take a good look. Take a good look at this thing, all right? Now, the, the V12, you know, is equivalent. What would you compare the V12 to in terms of like a Gotway wheel? Um, I would compare it to maybe, I would say the MSP because it's pretty much the same same wattage, okay? 1800, whatever. It's the same thing. Yeah, I would say the, the RS, the RS, the MSP, that would be the equivalent, I think, um, of the V12. When you see a V12, you don't immediately think performance where, you know, you would take this thing to a race. Now, I saw uh, Chooch take it to a race, but have you seen him racing that wheel ever since, you know, he's been promoting it ever, ever since that time that he got it? No, you don't see him race that because that's not... The point I'm trying to make is, while the V12 is a good contender to the MSP and the RS, it's not a top contender. That's my point. Yes, it, it, it fits in the same class, but it's not a top contender in that class. But GOAT still remains a top contender in that class. So I'm saying all of that to say this. It seems that for in motion to even catch up or even attempt to catch up to the GOAT in terms of battery capacity and performance and just the size of the wheel, they have to literally go out of their way, dude. Like, they have to literally go out of their way to even attempt that. Because why is the InMotion so much bigger with only 3,024 watt hours? While this portable beast right here is 2,700 watt hours, 300 watt hours less. And I'm able to, in a second, well, not in a second, in maybe less than five hours, set this up, maybe less than an hour, set this up with a 500, you know, uh, 500 watt hour battery pack to, to ramp it up to 3,200 watt hours. My obvious question for the um, person who's selling this battery pack is, does it have a proper BMS? That's my main concern. But you, but you get my point. You get my point. You know what I'm saying? So, the way I could explain this is, in terms of efficiency, just imagine someone who's able to run really fast versus another person who's able to run really fast. But the person who's like more athletic can do a lot more in a short period versus the other person who's also athletic but not as efficient you know, in order to do what that first person did in a short distance, he has to do like double or quadruple what that person did in order to be as efficient as that person. That's what I think is going on here. But GOAT is extremely efficient with what they do. They're extremely efficient with their delivery of machines. Like they're, it's crazy that they're able to do this. You know what I mean? So the truth about the Challenger is that 
In motion, almost didn't have a choice but to release that wheel, if you think about it. Because what else would they have released? If there was something better that In Motion could have released, they would have released it. And they didn't. Because there's nothing better they could release. So, that's what I wanted to say. That's what this ride was about. <clears throat> is to say that <laughs> In Motion is doing its best to answer your questions. It's doing its best to satisfy your needs and your desires. Um, and the desires of, you know, riders in general. But in order to really play the game that Bagot is playing, they have to do what they have to do. And that includes, unfortunately, that involves, not includes, unfortunately, that involves building a wheel that is not so user friendly. But at least you get what, you know, what you, um, you get something that's equivalent to what Bagode can offer. So it seems many riders, mostly newcomers, have extremely high expectations from King Sung and In Motion for what a wheel should be able to deliver, but only Bigod can actually deliver. This is probably a sad reality for many, but unless Bigod's competitors can design with less and offer more in a highly efficient way, then Bigod is your only answer leaving the competition, except for Libricam, as secondary options. It's clear we already have what we need in various packages from a company many of us don't seem to want, but need. Writers often post videos of fires, etc., but always tend to conveniently leave out the backstory of how the wheel was treated. Information that would probably lead to an unsatisfactory observation that rider error was once again to be blamed, although admittedly not in all cases. Other companies are just incapable of delivering wheels in the same way as Bigot, and in many instances, when they try, have fallen miserably short of expectation. I will only give credit to King Song for at least attempting to enter the performance market on two fronts, with the addition of a robust suspension and a powerful motor in a highly intricate and lovable design that is the S22. They indeed tried, and whether or not they failed at that attempt will be up to us to determine. Another one is Lieberkim, and we all know how that goes. They're just great. Extreme off-roaders like Mike Leahy, for example, even suggested minor disclaimers to riders regarding the S22, where he stated he doesn't recommend torquing the wheel just before a jump, which may cause a cutout, but rather gradually take the wheel up in speed, or just go with it. This is interesting because the same can't be said for bigode wheels. Why? because performance or nothing seems to be Bigode's mantra. Performance or go home. Bigode is like old school vaccines where you had to be exposed to the actual virus to build antibodies against them. Whereas King Song and In Motion are probably designed in low particle and highly sterile labs, unexposed to the natural elements, which can make them more prone to failure when finally put in the hands of riders. We see tons of videos of wheels from Bigode being tested constantly in various conditions upon announcement, but we have yet to see this level of rigorous testing from the competition. If you're looking for quality, that to me is by definition the basis of it, because how else are you going to test the limits other than by real world testing? Truth is, we have the company we've always wanted. And if it wasn't for their execution, the wheels we all love today from InMotion, King Song, and even Lieberkim simply would not exist. And that's a hard pill to swallow for the naysayers. In either case, InMotion did what InMotion had to do in order to remain relevant, even breaking their own rules on speed in order to satisfy our needs. But in the end, unless they go full steam ahead and truly take performance seriously, there will only be one king of performance. There will only be the goad. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you loved the video. Till next time, happy riding.